So you're probably watching this video because you're looking for a decent budget zoom lens for wedding photography. The zoom lens I'm using is the Tamron 7180. Let me explain to you guys why I like this lens so much when first getting into wedding photography. First, I'm gonna go ahead and make a cup of coffee. So getting into photography can be quite expensive. You have to buy a camera, you have to buy memory cards, you have to have a decent computer for editing, and all of these can add up pretty fast. <sighs> That's much better. But yeah, so you have to figure out ways to save money where you can. When you're looking at zoom lenses for Sony full frame cameras like the Sony a7R III, you're presented with a ton of options. You can go all the way to very expensive with the Sony G Master F 2.8, 7200. This is Sony G series lens that's a little bit cheaper. 7200, same build quality, but it's only f stop four. And unfortunately, Sigma lenses don't really have that 7200 range yet. I think they have like a 150, 600. So that's kind of big. But honestly, guys, this Tamron lens is phenomenal for its price. Yeah, you're losing 20 millimeters of focal length, but it's not that noticeable unless you literally can't physically move closer to your subject. Honestly, guys, the biggest selling point for this lens is its price point, and that's why I think you guys should seriously consider using this lens. Being that the f-stop on this lens is f2.8, I feel like a fair comparison lens is the G Master lens because it's also f2.8. The only difference is the G Master lens is 7200 and the Tamron lens is 7180. Now, the G Master lens is actually running around $2,600. Yeah, you can find it on sale for $2,200, $2,300 sometimes, but the average price is $2,600. And that's quite a bit more expensive than the Tamron lens back there. And that's because this Tamron lens is only $1,200. And even if you need to save a little bit more than $1,200, you can find a refurbished one on Amazon for $1,000. And I've had refurbished lenses before, and they're pretty good. Nothing wrong with the refurbished lens. So when first getting into wedding photography and photography in general, it's not bad to look for that savings to get you started. If you really wanna to upgrade to a G Master lens down the road, you can do that. There's no big deal with that. But there's no real point in getting a G Master lens right off the get-go. Now another big, big win that the Tamron lens has over the G Master lens is how much it actually weighs. For those of you that have shot weddings before or for those of you just getting into it or looking to it, saving some weight on your neck or your hands while carrying a camera around all day can be huge in your overall quality of life when shooting a wedding. This lens only weighs 810 grams, which is almost half of the G Master lens, which is coming in at a total of 1,480 grams. Now, I've used this lens for a few shoots now, and I've had no problem with the Sony cameras keeping up with autofocusing. I don't see any difference whatsoever. And out of the research I did prior to purchasing this lens for myself, I don't think anyone's had any issues with autofocusing when compared to a G Master lens. They're just one and the same. You can't really notice any difference, especially with photography. Now, all that being said, guys, there is one major pro to the G Master lens, and that is the Tamron has an external zoom ring, and the G Master lens has an internal zoom ring, which means if it's raining or if it's dusty or weather related problems, the overall build quality for weather sealing is better. It's more durable as well. This is cheaper material, which honestly doesn't bother me. This is, it still feels like a good quality lens. It's just not as premium as a G Master lens. So the durability of the G Master lens is better. Weather sealing is better. But is that really worth the extra $1,300? I don't, I really don't think so. Anyways, guys, I shot a wedding this past weekend. Let's go ahead and dive into a couple of the photos I took with this lens. And you guys can see the quality for yourself. I love how all of the pictures came out. All right, so let me just go ahead and switch camera angles here real quick. All right, guys, so for this first photo here, I had the idea to frame the shot with the tree branches and the leaves. I love how this photo came out personally. I wish I had the wherewithal to remove the tiki torch you see in the picture, but I love this lens. Like, I think the photo came out crystal clear. Obviously this is edited. I was going for a more 
dreamy wedding look for this wedding, I usually send my clients options and this is the option they chose as far as editing style went. But anyways, looking at this photo, you can see it has pretty nice bokeh in the background. Now I was shooting directly into sunlight, which was less than ideal, let's be honest. But for this shot, kind of worked in my favor. Really like how it came out. Now for this next shot, I wanted to get more of an intimate moment of the bride putting the ring on the groom's finger. So in order to do that, I had the focal length zoomed in all the way, as you can see, to 180. The depth of field in the background from the bokeh created from the f2.8 stop was beautiful. They popped right out of the picture. You can see the ring physically and her putting it on her, his finger. And it's just a very nice intimate shot that this lens honestly helped me capture. And for this last example shot here, this is more of a close, intimate, personal shot after the ceremony. The colors of the sunset and the lake were pretty nice. I really wanted to get a nice blurry, nice depth of field background for this photo. So it really draws the attention into how much they care for each other. And in this photo, you can really see how sharp this lens is with the details of both the bride and the groom. So now, I'm not really here to dive into the technical specs of this lens too much. I'm still relatively new to photography. I've been doing it only for about a year. But all the research I did led me to this lens. And honestly, saving $1,300 when I'm already spending so much on all the other gear I need for this dream of mine is so worth it. So if you're new to this whole photography thing and you're wanting to get into weddings or any other photography passion that you have, this lens is probably the route you should go. The G Master lens, obviously, there's a couple good things about it, like the build quality. It feels good. You can tell it's a premium lens, but this for half the price. The question is, is it really worth $1,300 more to get a G Master lens instead of this lens? And in my opinion, no. Anyways, I hope y'all liked the review and my opinion on this Tamron 7180 lens. If you did like this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. I'll be coming out with reviews of other lenses in the future, primarily focused on Sony products right now, maybe one day other products, but I love Sony cameras. And until next time, guys, I'll catch you in the next video.